Okay, hi there. Let's spend just a few minutes thinking about some of the limitations of the Human Development Index, or HDI. This is a key part of evaluation for economics exams. Quick reminder that the HDI is calculated through a geometric mean of three aspects of hopefully improvements in people's lives. So we take knowledge, health and living standards as our three component parts, each of which has an equal one third weighting. So knowledge uh, looks at the average of two uh, statistics, the mean years of schooling and the expected years of schooling. Long and healthy life looks at uh, looking at just the average life expectancy at birth in terms of years. And they use GNI, gross national income per capita, adjusted to purchasing power parity and converted to US dollars to give an indication of income and a decent standard of living and progress set against uh, the percentage of the population who are living in extreme poverty. So HGI, in, in a sense, one of the great strengths of the HGI is that people understand how it's computed. Hopefully the data is fairly reliable, not always, but hopefully fairly accurate. And we, we just, it gives us a neat, clean sense of progress in human development. But of course, it's not without its critics. That said, here's the data for 2022, selection of countries. So there's a lot of data on the screen here, but take a look at the top. Switzerland overtook Norway with a score of 0.962. Uh, Switzerland, Norway, Iceland were the top three countries. Uh, United Kingdom slipped to 18th. Uh, China comes in at 79th. India, 132nd. And uh, South Sudan, 191st of 191 countries for which data was available. South Sudan came bottom of the HDI in 2022. So what are some of the main limitations of the HGI? How is the HGI as currently constructed being criticised. Well, here are a few points. I just want to make a few points and uh, uh, maybe take some notes on this. First of all, of course, the HDR on its own, as the current HDR, just the one I've described to you, tends to ignore aspects, deeper aspects of gender inequality. And we're going to have a separate video on measuring gender inequality using HDI data uh, in the next video. So there could be significant variations in human development progress or lack of between male and female parts of the population. Secondly, the HDI captures how long people are educated for, the quantity, if you like, of education, but it doesn't tell us a great deal about the quality of education, the quality of teaching that students have access to, and the degree to which there is social mobility within countries. Uh, on its own, the HDI uh, doesn't tell us much about the scale and the depth of income and wealth inequality. Now, they now do publish an income inequality adjusted HGI, and we'll look at that in a separate video. But the HGI on its own is just health, income and education, and it ignores income inequality. And of course, we know within countries there's deep-rooted, persistent, often enormous gaps between rich and poor. Indeed, often the differences in inequality are deeper within countries and within regions and within localities than they are between countries. HGI looks at how long people live. So uh, longevity, uh, whereas other people say, well, we should be focusing more on the years of healthy life expectancy. How long can somebody expect to live before they perhaps are at risk of developing a chronic um, but you know, long-term illness. Uh, the HGI focuses on basic, important stuff, income, health, education, but what about the extent to which people are able to participate freely and without fear and favour in the democratic process? Uh, do people have access to uh, good government? Uh, what is the extent of political polarisation within societies? How much weighting should we attach to that? And linked with that, I guess, is perceptions of insecurity. That insecurity, of course, can come in many ways. Insecure incomes, insecure jobs, uh, environmental insecurity. So perceptions of human insecurity. Again, not measured by the HGI, but conceivably important to people's development progress. Huge interest, of course, in the extent to which development is sustainable. So the extent to which income per capita might be going up, but a country's natural capital might be... Being, uh, being reduced at the same time, and of course threats to future generations for their, uh, their development and their progress.
And increasingly, of course, we become importantly interested in well-being and stress, the extent to which people lead lives where subjectively their well-being is improving or getting worse or life which is full of anxiety at different times. So hopefully this slide might be worth taking a screenshot, maybe for your revision notes, give you some good examples of the limitations of the basic human development index. The, uh, the, the, this interesting stuff in terms of, of what's been happening recently, um, perceived insecurity is on the rise in most countries, according to the latest data, even in some very high income countries. This chart refers to the change in what's called the Index of Perceived Human Securities as part of the World Values uh, Survey, which comes out each year. And some evidence from the, the Gallup organisation that uh, stress levels amongst adults have gone up. There was obviously clearly a significant increase in stress during the COVID pandemic. I figure the edge down a little bit in 2021. But uh, this, this data suggests that adults... Well, if you take, for example, people with elementary schooling or less, the red line there, uh, over 40% of adults experience stress in the last you know, sort of daily basis. So well-being, uh, insecurity are becoming important watchwords not yet captured by the Human Development Index. In the next video, we'll take a little bit of a more detailed look at gender inequality and how we measure that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Take care, stay safe, stay happy, and see you sometime soon.